Originally, I came from Northern Ireland. Um, that was this was a long time ago, and I got into the video game industry. Um, video games back then were all kind of black and white and very simple. It was like this was seems like the dark ages now compared to what we have today. We used to draw everything on graph paper. In the back in the uh, in Ireland, I couldn't decide really what other career I could do. My mother wanted me to be a dentist, but I, I wasn't really into that. Um, I remember my dentist in Ireland had dandruff, and that's about the worst thing in the world, to be laying there with your mouth open with a dentist with dandruff. But So clearly that wasn't good. Another thing in Ireland that they did was, um, you know, it seemed like heaven to some people because there's Guinness and whiskey everywhere. But, uh, but they're very proud of making the, uh, the Titanic. They're, they like to remind everybody that's uh, that was working perfectly when it left Ireland. Um, but the, the shipbuilding and all this kind of stuff, it just wasn't for me. Making alcohol sounds like fun, but wasn't for me. And so the video games were just something that sort of worked with my DNA. It was sort of my element. And I started making more and more games. And the industry took off. It started off as, as, as you had to write everything in books, but very quickly it became a real industry. And, um, and that was it for, for Ireland. I couldn't stay there because the business was really in England. So I moved to England. Um, I started to say things like cheerio and became a little more posh. Um, and then uh, I had this weird accent, which was a mix of Irish and English. And then uh, I realized that the business actually isn't in England. The, the business is in the United States. And so I just needed to get out here. And, um, and one day I got a call from Virgin. There's a the big Virgin company that seems to be an airline but it's actually everything there's lots of virgin companies they also had virgin video games so they called me up and said would you like to move to the united states and um you know we'll get you a car we'll get you an apartment and just get on a plane now and come out here and, and make a game for us and so that to me seemed like a really great move to get out to the United States and check this out. So I literally just locked my house up and flew out. The game it turns out was for McDonald's and so this was my chance to make a game for a large US corporation. But McDonald's absolutely hated it. When they saw it they're like, what is this thing? It's terrible. Where's, where's, where's the restaurant? How do we buy burgers and fries in this game? And we go, kids don't want to buy like fries you can't eat. That's not a game. And so anyway, we launched the game and it got game of the year from Sega. And so from that point, we got on a roll. We did a, a game for 7-Up um, following that and then one for Disney. We did Disney's Aladdin. And so finally, I decided to start my own company. Now, when you start your own company, one of the things you do care about is location. And so I thought it would be cool to be by the beach. Um, so I, I set up an office in Laguna Beach. But, uh, but that turned out to be not such a smart move because we had terrible parking problems. There was no space. Um, we also, with so many people and so many computers, you couldn't get a credit card between people in the building. So we ended up moving to another location in Newport Beach. And um, it was beautiful. We were right on the water. Um, it seemed perfect. I remember bringing people in and they would go, these offices are incredible. The problem was that whenever you're a, a video game maker, you generally will want to, uh, to control the light. And so literally the guys started sticking paper up on the windows, trying to block the sunlight out. And so the view was gone about 10 minutes after arrival. So it turned out maybe that wasn't the best move. But finally we decided to, uh, to make a technology which would, would be very server-based. It would be something that would change the future of the video game industry. Um, because instead of distributing games in stores and, um, and having to wait for hours to download it, our company would be able to take games and run them in the cloud so you could play them instantly. And it would finally level the playing field between movies and music and video games. They would all be instantly available everywhere you go. This technology, because it was so server-based, meant I ended up traveling around Orange County trying to find offices which could handle this kind of tech and servers and everything else. And I had the most funny conversations with, with all the landlords because they would say to me, just put all the servers in the cupboard over there. And, uh, and you go, we can't put our servers in the cupboard. It's, you know, it'll go on fire. Uh, and, and then they would, we would say, but where's the air conditioning? And they didn't have any. There's a lot of buildings in this area well, they literally will tell you, open the window if it gets hot. And, and that, again, is just not acceptable for our kind of environment. So that's why we ended up at TechSpace. TechSpace was the only company that we went to that could even understand what we're talking about server-wise. They have a real 
data center, like a real full-on data center in the, in the building itself. And so it made it a pleasure. We, we, we just delivered our equipment, put it in the racks, and we were up and running. As far as company space goes, when we arrived here, it was actually just me. Um, my my co-founders were in Europe, and so day one was me sitting in an office. Everything worked, like so we had internet connection and things like that, but um, we just started expanding, hiring people, and, and really setting up a company from scratch here within the building. And uh, they have a feature which I wasn't aware of at the time, but it was turned out really useful, is the walls move in the building. So literally, they can, they can if you say, oh, oh, I need to bring another 10 people in, they just take down a wall and your office is suddenly bigger. And so we expanded and expanded and took down wall after wall after wall. Um, and we would share the other facilities here, the conference rooms and things like that. But um, over time, that worked perfectly for us because it allows a company to start with one person um, and literally expand as big as you need to go. And uh, we, did, we were actually here um, until we got to a point where the company had achieved its objective. We proved what we were doing was actually technically possible and we were acquired by Sony um, in 2012. And so we're still here to this day. Sony agreed that this is a great building and we should just stay here. So um, now it's past the acquisition. Um, but we're still using the data center and we're still using the office, um, the offices here. So it's been a fun journey for us and I would recommend it if anyone's thinking of building a tech startup, this is a great place to be.